Hello, I'm Tommy Moore from the Bud Sitzer Lab and in this particular video I wanted to talk about why we focus on weapons. Many, 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 many confrontations happen without weapons, but why? Why do we include weapons in the part of the curricula that we study? Now the main thing is I'm a strong believer in you must first get conversant and able in social violence. Now social violence is the type of violence you might face in a pub, in a car park, in a disagreement outside of a school, in those types of situations, whilst there is still violence and that violence could tip over the edge into something much nastier, you know, there is an acceptable social level to that violence. And in those paradigms, your understanding of boxing and of wrestling and of control and all of those facets is really, really important. You need the attributes. You need to be able to rough and tumble. You need to be able to spy. You need to be able to take a hit give a hit, you need to be able to do all of those things. It's very, very important. And that's why I instill in my pupils, you know, you must be able to box, you must be able to wrestle, you must be able to do these things in order to be a holistic martial artist. But that's social violence, that's, that's flash in the pan violence. But we've also got to consider asocial violence. Now, asocial violence is predatory violence. Violence where grievous bodily harm slash death can come to you, you know. So we look at things like aggressive home invasions, we look at terror attacks, we look at you know, psychopathy, sociopathy, you know, these types of individuals, you're already the prey. So when they attack you, their understanding and level and preparedness for violence is already an eight to 10. You going about your day in Tesco and doing your food shop, you're at a zero to two. And you need to be able to get from that to 11. You need to exceed his level of violence. And if you're to exceed his level of violence, often you need a shortcut. And that shortcut for many people, if we engage our monkey brain and our Lego-like hands, is to put something in those hands and use it in a weaponized way. And when it comes to life or death, the faster we can arm ourselves, the faster we can finish the confrontation, therefore the safer we are. Yep. If you can hit someone with something harder than anything else you've got on your body, you cause much greater damage, you end the confrontation quickly, and therefore you close down a lot of the variables that could happen in a longer fight. So being able to, A, identify and acquire weapons from your environment, from your opponent, or from yourself that you've planned. B, be able to use them and use them properly. Now, these are very important facets for self-defense against asocial violence. Now, you're much more likely to be faced by social violence, hey, you know, give me your wallet, I'm gonna do you in, than you are going to be faced by asocial violence, someone kicking your doors in and trying to choke you to death. But still, your ability to use weapons in many ways is contingent on understanding and preventing and fighting against asocial violence. You must also understand the weapon archetypes in that there's no point in just training with one weapon archetype and seeing that as suitable for defense against asocial violence. If I'm attacked on holiday in a restaurant and all I've got is a steak knife and I've been practicing with knives, short knives, brilliant, fantastic, I'm already prepared. But what if I've only practiced with batons? or sticks, or long knives. If I've only practiced with long knives and now I've got the short knife, I'm immediately at a disadvantage. You need to understand the wide range of fighting weapon variables, from a short, sharp instrument to a long, sharp instrument, short blunt, long blunt, flexible, firearms, tasers. You need a good understanding of many of the weapon archetypes because you never know what you're going to be able to pick up, what you'll have to take from somebody else, and use it against another third party, you have no idea of the variables that you might come across. The weapon you might have on you, by accident or incident, or by planning, the weapon they may have on their person to attack you, or the weapons I might find in my near environment when I'm attacked. So you need a good broad understanding of weapon archetypes, how they're best deployed, and very importantly, I think people forget this, where they're best employed on the person. So a lot of people, they think, oh, I've got stick, I can use stick. Yeah, but you need to be as accurate with that stick as you are with your punches. There's no point in a piece of asocial violence hitting to the top of the thigh. There's no point in asocial violence hitting to the shoulder. You know, there are certain types of technique which in an asocial violence situation no longer make sense. So therefore you can move them into the social violence pot. So you're looking at weapon archetypes for asocial violence. You need to know how to acquire them from your environment, how to take them from your opponent and to prevent them being taken from you once you've got them. You know, being able to retain your weapon is a really important skill. Because if I've had to take my violence from two to 11, 
the opponent's now on the back foot and he wants to take away my leveling, he wants to take away my knife, take away my hammer, take away my crowbar, take away the advantage. So again, making sure that you can keep hold of your weapon is a hugely misunderstood and underlooked piece of the arts. In the Bartuts lab, we look at all types of archetypal weaponry and how they're used, starting with the AK-1. The AK-1 being a chunk of masonry, a brick, a stone, a pebble, a lump of something hard with which you can fight. And you need to get comfortable and conversant with this. You don't want the time that you have to do this to be the first time you've handled it and manipulated it. You know, do I drive this into your face? Do I use the sharpened edge if there is a sharpened edge? Do I throw it? If I throw it, is it accurate? Is it not? You, know, you need to be able to get used to these types of weapons, get familiar with how they feel, how they work, where to hit people with them. You know, what are the advantages of this? What are the disadvantages of this? You know, would I use this against a knife? You know, this is a heavy bit of kit. Can I move my hand as fast? No. So again, you've got to consider the pros and cons and the attributes of that weapon archetype. You know, you move around to things like short blades. Now, a short blade can appear from nowhere, as you saw there, from pocket to blade. You've got a blade now. And blades come in all shapes and sizes, from Stanley knives, utility knives, to sharpened screwdrivers, to what's now known and marketed in the UK as zombie knives, big bloody Rambo knives. You've got all manner of them, but they all follow the same principles and archetypes. Some are single-edged, some are double-edged, some are very sharp at the top, some are just more for cutting. But either way, you need to get familiar with short, sharp weaponry and how to use it, how to defend it, and how to retain it. Yep. When you're looking at incidentals, you need to understand that, well, if I understand this, maybe I can find some attributes to use with an incidental pen. I can use this in many, many similar ways, but in many ways, they are dissimilar as well. So again, understand the strengths and weaknesses of likely incidental weapons in any scenario. What type of pen makes a good pen? What's the best grip for it? Because it is different in many ways from the grip I might have with the knife. For one, I'm holding a thumb cap over here. I don't want the thumb, I don't want the pen sticking out the top, hit anything hard, I lose my grip. So again, there are optimizations and tweaks that you need to make when retaining something like this as a weapon. So you need to get used to incidentals, brick, pen, belt, using walls, floors, doorways, environmental weapons. Short sharps are very, very important. But let's imagine you only train in short sharps and you get attacked when you're in Burma or when you're in the Caribbean. Maybe now the paradigm that you're attacked with or what you have access to is a long sharp, a machete. So how, do, how does that change? Does a long sharp work differently to a short sharp? Well, yes, it does. The things I can do with it, the space I have available to me, you know, how it works in a grapple, all of these things are very different between a machete and a short sharp knife. So again, getting used to the familiarity, getting a familiarity with different types of weapons is very important if you're to face asocial violence. You know, if you're attacked in Burma and you can get hold of one of these or get one of these off your attackers, you need to bloody well know how to use it. So again, it's an important part of your preparedness. You know, a big part of what I'm doing now as well is looking at different types of blunt weapons. So, you know, you've got things like this. So you've got extendable coshes, battens, baseball bats, you've got all around the world, there are different types of blunt weapon and each have their own different characteristics from when they're in short form or when they're in long form. So you need to be aware of how they're used, what are the best features are, how to defend them and how to retain them on your person, especially with a blunt weapon. It's easy for someone to get access to your blunt weapon. So therefore, how do you make sure you get that weapon back or you continue focusing on disabling that attacker? It's a very important thing that we focus on at the Bartitsu Lab. A lot of the work I'm doing now is also in firearms. Now I live in the UK and we have very few, but increasing uh, amounts of firearm attacks. But then you also have to understand that if you're a person of the world, if you go on holidays, if you travel for business, going from the green and lovely pastures of the relatively unarmed UK and finding yourself in parts of the world where weapons are prolific, if you are to get hold of that weapon, you need to, again, know how to use it, how to retain it, how to defend it, how to load it, how to rack it, how to aim it. These are very important things. And if you're looking at modern self-defense against asocial situations, if you want to make yourself very, very useful, you need a basic understanding of everything from that rock and that pen and that bat all the way through to weapon systems. So you might say, right, okay, how do I, you know, what's the difference between single and double action? How do I maintain trigger discipline? 
you know, how can I do a brass check? How many bullets are in it? And what happens if it fires and my hand's over here? You, know, you need to understand the anatomy of the weapons, how they work and how to use them if you need to, how to clear them if you need to. And again, understanding the different archetypes necessary for using, defending against or retaining a firearm. Yeah, and you take it to an extreme level. So you take things like the Tunisian beach attacks, the attacks in Kenya. You go to a lot of countries in the world and the prolific player in the game is one of these bad boys. And if you're ever unfortunate to have to get one of these off a person or use one of these, you know, if you think of the Paris train attacks, no, those are very lucky because those are members of the military and they have a passing knowledge of, of, of how this weapon system works, even if it's not their familiar weapon system they're broadly aware of the principles so again it's much the same in what we do in the Bartitsa lab and I'm spending a lot of time studying with Brett McKenzie from Viking Kapap so he's ex-British infantry uh, the Viking regiment and it's very important to me and in the training that I do that if I go to places in the world where this weapon is prolific and I might need to defend myself against this weapon or be offensive with this weapon I need to understand you know if I grab this little click at the bottom it takes the magazine out. If I punch hard on this particular element here, I can take the round out. You know, why shouldn't I grab this if it's been firing a lot? Does this get hot? How easy is it to actually hit someone with the butt of the weapon? Is it more conducive to muzzle thump them with the front? You know, understanding the anatomy of the weapon, how it works, how it's loaded. You know, these are things that could save your life one day. And so for me, for my studies in Bartitsu, if I'm looking for full spectrum defense against asocial violence, understanding things from the AK-1 to the AK-47 is very, very important. Taking the time to understand all the different weapon archetypes around you and have at least passing practical knowledge on how to use them, how to defend against them, and how to retain them. It's a big part of what we do. I'm spending more and more time learning. You know, firearms are a a new venture for me you know i am a i'm a white belt in this stuff you know with these i can do some fantastic things with sticks i can do some fantastic things you know with these types of weapons i'm a white belt so again you need to make sure that you approach people that have got the skills in those weapons and acquire them and bring them into your holistic mix because for me in the modern bartitsu that i teach it's very important in preparedness for a social violence to be able to get from 2 to 11 and from 2 to 11, as I said at the start of the video, it's about shortcuts. Now, obviously, you can do it without a weapon, but it's much harder. If I can acquire a weapon, my ability to short jump, you know, shortcut that gap is much better. I can be much more deadly, much more final. I can save myself time. And as with all of these things, everything from the brick, the pen, the pistol, the knife, the baton, the AK, really it's about the mindset, the weaponized mindset of how can I cause maximum damage to you in the shortest possible time, in the safest way for me, so I can get out of dodge? So never forget that all of these things are tools. They are skills, they are techniques. How to rack, how to load, how to aim, how to punch, how to throw. These are tools in the toolbox, but still you need that aggressive mentality, that strategic mentality, that, that target focused mentality. Yeah. Being armed is a, is, is a state of mind as well as a, a practical truth. So again, if you're thinking that weapon first mindset in cases of asocial violence, you can find yourself much better prepared to deal with a threat in a way that is most beneficial to you and yours. Um, so those are some rambling thoughts on the use of weapons and how I think about them as part of the Bartitsa lab. And it's something I'll be increasingly looking at to bring into the fold because as I believe, soon as you have the core tools of social violence, how to use the fence, how to negotiate, how to trick, how to strike, how to grapple in a very effective way. You know, it's then incumbent on you if you're teaching modern holistic self-defense to have a great understanding of how to go from A to Z in combat weapons, incidental weapons, environmental weapons, because for many people, especially if they don't have the size, the strength, the attributes necessary to do it unarmed, these are the things that will help save their day. So again, making sure we understand the strengths and limitations of the unarmed human, and again, provide some insight into how to best use tools, because we are monkeys that use tools, to help people 
achieve the best self-protection and self-defense outcomes. Um, so I've been Tommy Moore from the Bar Tipsa Lab. Hope you found that interesting. Cheers.